Hello and welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and this is the epic playthrough of Gloom of Killforth, a fantasy quest game by Tristan Hall. In the last video we did, we did the solo setup for this monster. And you can see we've got ourselves quite the land sprawl set up here. It's a 5x5 five five grid of the land, randomly put out, and we have begun our epic quest in Sprawl City in the center. I'll be going over a few things before we get into gameplay, so let's touch on the beginnings of that now. First thing I'm going to touch on is the uh, ancient card in the back here. So he is the ancient we are going after. We will talk about his story and character in a second. We've got plot cards over here. The knight cards are in the back here. They're in a pile. You'll notice there's one card underneath. May look a little strange. As you can see, it says knight phase on the bottom. So this is going to talk about the ancient's abilities. This guy right here we have to deal with. Uh, it says in the knight phase when a Badlands location falls into gloom, which is going to come from the knight deck. When it does, you place one random plot card on it. The plot cards are going to be these cards right here. Those plot cards will end up on Badlands locations only based on that ability that we just read. When they show up on the board, if we don't deal with them, not only are they going to cause us grief, but they're going to cause us even more grief when the Ancient One comes into the game. When he actually enters play and we eventually uh, fight him or choose to go after him and confront him and then take him on, the interesting part of the game is you take all those plot cards and they add to his strength. So if you haven't been dealing with them or managing them well, you're just making him stronger. It's kind of a nasty combination, but it keeps you on your toes in terms of managing that, which is a really fun and interesting way to kind of plague the land as you go through, not only with the Ancient One, but with the flipping over of the tiles as things go into Doom, which comes from that Night Deck. So that just kind of covers high level over those three. Uh, of course, we've got all of our items and things that we can gain from spells, titles, items, and allies on the side here. Uh, we've got ourselves two items of which uh, we were chosen or choosing between, I should say, in the last video. We'll touch on that in a second as to which one we'll go with. These, Whichever one we do will become a rumor, and I'll explain that as well. We have the fact we are a priest and dwarf. I'll be going over the story of why... Not why we're a priest and a dwarf, but the story of our character's beginnings or humble beginnings into now, just to set the stage for this uh, this playthrough. I do really want it to be kind of a little bit more of a role-playing game, and I'll be trying my best to kind of implement that as I go through. We've got our uh, Badlands cards, our Mountain cards, Plain cards, and Forest cards. They all have color, which again corresponds to the different locations you can see on the board here. This is the high-level grid if you want to go ahead and kind of Take a look at it, pause it, and do what you want uh, just to kind of see how it looks. And again, this is gonna, this whole map layout is going to change as we go along. And I'll always be zooming in on locations so you can see the artwork and the cards as we go through it. So you won't miss anything. Um, so I guess we'll start right off the top with talking about uh, the, the saga itself. The actual reason we're doing this. And that's because we're playing the Rescue Villagers saga. And we have the first chapter to deal with. So we're going to read this card and give you guys an idea as to what we have to deal with in this playthrough. So here we go. The cities and castles throughout the land are preparing for the descending gloom. But a stranger informs you that the outlying farmsteads and villages have been left defenseless against the growing tides of evil. Evil. <laughs> he speaks of a humble tribe, their isolated village beset by darkness on all sides, under attack by mysterious forces. That's never good. You find a route through the grasslands and the wilderness to save them. Okay, so we got some kind of some flavor text, some story background as to why we're going after or going to rescue these villagers. So that sounds good. Sounds like we got quite a journey ahead of us. One of the things to note on here says to complete. So when we are ready to spend five gold and we are going to perform a regale action, that regale action allows us to check that we have the keywords required down below here either as an asset or as a rumor. Rumors are in our hand assets we have either discovered and found, or they've just, if a game effect says so, we just get them into our hand, or not our hand, but our play area. So I will explain that in a second as well. So we're kind of going after planes, we're looking for badlands, we're looking for stranger, those are the keywords we need. The one on the far right is only required for one to two players and we are playing solo, so that is gonna be a requirement. So we'll put that over to the side, that is covered. We've got ourselves uh, two items to choose from our character, which we will also talk about in a second. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about 
our character, like our own character here sitting in Sprawl City. So our character has uh, and is in Sprawl City. One thing to mention, I, in a future playthrough video, I believe I'm going to exchange this out for a Dwarven miniature. I want it to match the race of the card that I actually am rather than the class. And just for thematic approach, I'm going to have a Dwarven miniature used uh, for the game going forward. So I wanted to have this here for the first video just because this is what comes in the box. But, you know, it's never a bad thing to spice the game up and make it even more. Uh, you can kind of dig yourself really deep into the game and get into it. So that's my way of making it a little bit more lifelike for me. Uh, it won't. I don't know if it'll be a painted miniature, but it'll be a miniature of, of a dwarf, which will more closely relate to who we actually are. But for now, this will do, and we are in Sprawl City to start. So the whole backstory for our character, our character's name I've given him is Vognus. He's a dwarven character, he's a priest. So essentially he's a paladin, basically. Uh, he's a mixture of, uh, he's got a lot of religious background. Uh, of course, dwarves live uh, ma mainly in mountainous regions. We have mountainous cards here, and we also have many, many mountainous regions like the Lava Canyons, or the Rolling Hills, or the Lonely Gorge. All those locations are where the dwarves prefer to make their homes, or have had their homes established for thousands of years. So these are places where you would typically find a dwarf, but our dwarf is not a typical dwarf. Our dwarf actually resides in Sprawl City. He had lived his entire life up to adulthood in these mountainous regions, going from place to place, protecting them, and then at one point decided to go into Sprawl City and join the temple in order to become uh, a priest. And that is currently why he is a class of priest. We're going to go ahead and read a little bit of the story text as to what's behind our character. So we'll start with the dwarf when it says, The dwarf march abroad as the threat... Uh, or march abroad yeah as a threat to their mountain home grows so you can see he needed to get out of his mountainous regions and actually make an effort to try to stop the ongoing threat that he knew was coming don't ask me how we'll find out as we play through this class right here is a priest that is also part of his storyline it says as the gloom and despair spread many returned to prayer and the old gods the priests welcomed them with open arms so he spent his days in Sprawl City essentially welcoming scared individuals and praying for them. Now, you can do that for so long and there is some aid to be found there, but at the end of the day when the gloom starts spreading in Killforth um, and there's an ancient one out there causing havoc and wreaking havoc upon the land, praying isn't everything it's cracked up to be and sometimes you need some action behind it. And so he's decided to leave the temple, head out into the world, and aggressively try to stop what is starting to misshape the entire world. So that's kind of our background on our particular character, Vognus. Now let's talk about the Ancient One who he's actually going after, because this guy is not nice. And I, I could be wrong, it could actually be a female as well, I'm not too sure. Uh, we'll have to take a look at that myself and see if that's true, it could be. Uh, but again, nice, a really amazing artwork on him, but again, nice artwork, but uh, not someone you want to run into. This is an abyss of penance, um, and it is an ancient demon. A legend tells that the abyss, uh, and now I've been pronouncing it abyss so many times in the last uh, solo uh, setup video that uh, when I look back over it, I was like, that's wrong. It's uh, abyss, if I can say that correctly. I'm going to try my hardest not to say abyss. So it says, legend tells that the abyss appeared in ages past, inspiring primitive religions of violence and sacrifice. Rare ancient sites of crumbling temple ruins are still scattered with etchings depicting horrific ceremonies and dark rituals of penance in her honor. Ah, so it is a she. Okay, behind that mask. So basically it's really cool that we have an ancient that actually not only correlates and is the complete polar opposite of our dwarf being a priest, We've got a priest going after someone who's also known for having uh, horrific ceremonies and etchings and all these like, uh, basically its own religion unto itself, but a religion that you don't want spreading across your land. Um, so he, or she I should say, is going to be a menace in this land and we're going to see her slowly start to tear apart areas as her power grows, as the gloom increases. We're going to be flipping these cards over as the night deck instructs every nighttime deck card that's pulled the land grows further and further into darkness. And that's kind of the cool part about this game is the ongoing 
sense of doom, basically, as you go through the story. So now we've covered our uh, actual chapter that we have to succeed at. Again, we're going to be keeping our eyes open for keywords that land on planes, badlands, and stranger. Those, that's our main objective to move forward. We also have our cards read in terms of our storylines. These will come into play when we start to complete chapter quests. We'll be able to gain additional special abilities. Uh, everything else is kind of already set in stone, so I think we can start now. I think we're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is we'll kind of take a look at our character here in Sprawl City and make some choices. Now, I kind of want to get out on the land and see what I can do. It does allow you here in Sprawl City, as you can see, to perform a market action. However, being as poor as I am, even though I'm a priest, I don't get paid very well for my profession, and so I've only got one goal to my name. I'm just a poor, uh, maybe uh, maybe I actually go out uh, drinking too often. I've left, I basically just don't have too much money to my name. And uh, I'm gonna have to leave this town in order to go out into the land and adventure and try to find some way of making money. Uh, now the thing to talk about, one thing that I just remembered, we have to deal with the items. Now, these two cards came from my last solo setup video where you have to, at the beginning of every game, you're allowed to choose two cards from one of these decks, only one, uh, but you're grabbing two cards and you get to pick which one you want to keep. It kept as a rumor and then it goes into your hand, not into your play area or your assets area, essentially is what it's called. So we've got these two cards to choose from, both of which come and as rumors from two different locations. One's the Rolling Hills, which is a mountainous region. We do not need mountainous uh, as a keyword. This one here is the Wretched Bog and the purple tree resembles the Badlands deck, which actually in fact is one of the keywords we do need from our Sega card. Uh, did I just say Sega? Sa Saga card. <laughs> so, this is the one that's kind of the one that, that, that's driving me the most. And on top of it, it says well, if we actually end up getting this eventually, this item, uh, we'll be able to use a deed sacrifice and when an enemy loses one or more HP, we can just flat out poison him and get rid of him, which is really, really cool. Uh, this one right here says we can, as a deed sacrifice, we can discard an encounter card and draw a replacement one. So that's good for kind of blocking off nasty enemies and hopefully bringing in something that's less painful. But we're going to go for the poison. So typically you take this card and you shuffle it into your item deck because you're only allowed to have one. But I'm just going to put it at the bottom for now and we'll do the shuffling in between videos to keep things going. So we've got ourselves uh, poisoned. This card is not in our asset area yet. It goes into our hand as a rumor. And as a rumor, we can put it over here in our hand. And if we head to the Wretched Bog, we can actually try to discover this card. And when we go ahead and make a discover, we can turn a rumor into an asset if we're at the location. And then it shows up here and then can be used for all of its wonderful abilities. Now, the Wretched Bog is way up here. And as you can see from the artwork, there's quite a few individuals waiting for us there. So we're talking in terms of moving, we've got ourselves uh, one, two, three. We'd have to use three action points to get there. Just so you guys understand in terms of action points, they're one of the most important things in the game. They are represented by the black hearts. So every single one of those that's used for an action, whether it's for moving, clearing, searching, hiding, confronting, resting, discovering, market, regale, or finale, there's all kinds of different actions you can do. I'm not gonna tell you how to do them all because we're gonna play through and you'll see it. But essentially when you do one of those actions, you cough up one of these APs, which is a black one. All the HPs are on the bottom, which is our health, which correlates to our four. And of course, if we're in a battle that hits us, we lose action points as well. Nasty, right? So that's kind of how you can get slowed down. It's going into a battle with a lot of, H a lot of AP and then getting hit. So the first thing I'm gonna to do to start the game, and this is really a smart strategic choice, especially when we don't have any assets in our hand and the only thing we're relying on is just our checks in here, which is the, we've got a combat, we've got ourselves study, we've sneak and our uh, willpower. And essentially we only have a boost to willpower giving us four there. We have three combat, three study and two sneak. Not bad, but we don't have anything else to really help us. So going out in the wilderness could be dangerous. So what should we really do as a smart first choice would be to hide. By hiding, we spend one AP, so we take our black heart away. One of them anyway, represents one AP. And we go into hiding and we avoid night effects and we can also have evade and surprise, and we can evade and surprise enemies, which is always a positive. So what we do is we take the, this particular token right here that is dropped and we put it on our character. And essentially it shows that we're in hiding now, which means when we fight or if we run into an enemy essentially on this, battle mat at any point in time, we can actually use it to come out of hiding to gain surprise 
and we gain an additional die on that attack. It only happens for that first kind of round of the battle, but hey, it's an extra die, never a bad thing. So I'm gonna do something that involves us just moving into, well, that's the thing, should I? Here's the debate. We've got ourselves two forest locations on either side. We don't need forest as a keyword. Uh, it's not, it doesn't mean you can't go there though. We do have the lost forest over here. We have the lush jungle over here. We've got the barren wastes over here, and we've got the misty fens over here. And we can only move orthogonally, so we can only ever go like this. We cannot do diagonal movement. So that's the reason why I just mentioned these four here. Uh, but we do need a Badlands keyword. So we could head down or we could head further away. But remember, Wretched Bog is further away. So let's head up to that, let's, let's head that direction. So I'm gonna use one HP, which is gonna be my second HP. And we're gonna go ahead, toss this over here. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do to remind myself of the day structure in this game, just before we keep going, is I'm gonna take a die, a single die, we're gonna put it to one, and we're gonna put this up here on this card. This is gonna signify and help us remember what day we're on. So whatever the die face facing me is displaying is what number of the day we're on. Once we get to higher than six, obviously we'll add a second die to keep counting. You can always use the night deck as a counter because as it goes down, that's how, you know, there's only 25 in there. So once they're gone, they're gone. But I just like knowing what day we're on quick reference wise. So we're on day number one. Okay, so we've made it to the Misty Fens. So we've basically traveled out of the Sprawl City. We've made a long, long journey. We're very, very tired. We've made it to the Misty Fens and we're laying down for some rest. But when you first move into a new location, you need to pull a card, an encounter card that relates to that if there is none there. So we're doing that now. Oh, look what we found. Just when we want to take some rest and uh, recover a little bit from our long journey, we find ourselves a black orc who does not look happy to see us. It does say he's an enemy. He's a humanoid and a Badlands character. So that's perfect. That's the keyword we need, or one of the Badlands keywords we need is right there. So if we get this card, we can actually pull it into our hand. That could be really handy. Okay, so the first thing that happens with him is there is a map trap, pay one gold. Now, if I just go ahead and do this, it doesn't really give you any ideas to why I lost a gold. This is where kind of the role playing sense comes into the game. You gotta go ahead and kind of paint your story as to how you got, you know, how you lost this gold. Well, it is a trap essentially, right? So the thought process could be, we were going to the Misty Fens here. We decided to lay down and we ended up laying right uh, next to a trap. Uh, we got ourselves snagged and we tried to pull ourselves free, but sadly, the gold, the only gold that the priest had that he had saved for his entire uh, journey, which was a really poor life decision, uh, had gone ahead and lost his gold down, a, down maybe a, a pit, essentially, and is gone from his reserve. So now he doesn't have any money, but he's free from the trap, thank goodness. And the trap maybe alerted the black orc in the area. And the black orc heard him and is coming for him. Uh, because he heard the trap activate. All right, so it says right here, the dreaded black orcs and their general Kargash, if I'm saying that correctly, command monstrous battalions that are swarming throughout the land. It's too bad we ran into him. So we've got two options here. One, we can actually combat him by using, uh, he would be rolling four dice against us and we would be rolling three. Five and six is our success is very similar to games like Eldritch and Arkham Horror. So your odds are against you essentially. It's not even a 50-50 roll. Um, and you can also sneak. So for one or higher, if you have that, you can actually just choose to outright jump past him. So we could, being that our sneak is two, just say, you know what, let's just get away from, let's just, let's just bypass him and not fight him. But you know what, he's got the keyword Badlands and I really want to um, engage him and potentially take him down. Uh, so I think that's what we're gonna go ahead and do, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna start the engagement on this guy. Uh, so w when you actually start an engagement when they're drawn from an encounter, it just happens automatically. It doesn't cost an action point to do so. It's just happening. You moved and you ran into this guy kind of thing. So you didn't spend any action points to do so. However, as he gets successes and hits us for HP, he's gonna suck away the remaining AP we've got. And that's probably more than likely gonna happen. We'll see how this goes. So we've, I'll put the black orc right here in front of us so we're reminded of his wonderful presence. We're gonna go ahead and grab our uh, dice tray here. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and grab dice for him. He gets four dice. So I'm gonna grab four red, just to make it easy. Uh, for us, we only get three, but the cool thing is we are hidden. So because we're hidden, we're gonna use the element of surprise giving us an extra die. So it's an even, at least for the first round, it's an even four, four kind of roll. 
We're really hoping he doesn't hit us hard because uh, that would be a that would be a bad thing. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna roll these out and see what happens. You guys ready for this? I'm not. <laughs> okay, not bad. So he ended up getting us for one, and we ended up getting him for two. Okay, because five and sixes are hits. So the other thing I forgot about, which I should have done, uh, whenever you pull a kind of a character you're battling, right before you battle, you go ahead and drop the amount of hearts on him that he actually has on his card. So he have four hearts, and we went ahead and successfully hit him for two of those hearts. So we can take two of the hearts right off. He's almost gone, but not fully. However, he was able to hit us, so he not only takes a heart away, but he takes an action point off of us as well, slowing us down, which is not good. Uh, then we essentially go into the next round of attack of the battle. Now, we no longer have surprise, so I do not get this die. The surprise element's off me as well. Uh, and we're rolling to just continue the battle, essentially. So, I'm at a disadvantage now. I still need two successes I can take out, and I can also use fate tokens to give myself an additional success if I do bad. But, uh, I managed to do it. Even though I got hurt quite a bit, I got hit twice, but I hit him twice. So when I go ahead and do that, and this is gonna be something I have to double check on, I've gone ahead and I've killed him off. I'm gonna to have to check in the rules real quick whether or not his damage still applies. But based on the confrontation or battle results from the rules, if I remember correctly, and I'm gonna to have to just take a quick look here. Um, it says a hero and foe each separately resolve a fight test. And for each success, you know, it basically goes back and forth. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, if a foe has no HP, is defeated. Uh, oh, cool. So the foe defeated check happens before the hero defeated check. Um, doo -doo -doo. So I think, I could be wrong on this, and I may, need, I may need your guys' opinion on whether or not I do this correctly. Um, but essentially, I don't believe I take any wounds from this because I hit him and killed him. Uh, because technically you do a skirmish and then you check to see whether the foe was defeated first and the foe was defeated and then you check to see whether the hero was defeated. Um, but in this particular case, I think I would still get hit. I really do. So I'm going to go ahead and take the, the hits that he threw at me. So he's going to knock off my last AP and he's going to knock off one more health. So he almost was able to take me completely out of the equation, which is really nasty. But I was able to take him out. So that's good. And I'm going to double check the rules on that just to be sure that I played that correctly. Um, and it's a great time to be kind of near the end of the video because I can, I can stop here and then move into the next video with the correct result. Um, so what we'll do is when you go ahead and you end up uh, killing off uh, the Black Orc, you kind of move to the rewards phase. And essentially when you move to the rewards phase, you do two things of which we'll kind of talk about at the beginning of the next episode because that'll actually just pan out really nicely. And we can also kind of go over what we should and shouldn't do. So, this has been the very, very first episode of Gloom of Killforth, the very, very first day, essentially, of Run Out of AP anyway. We're going to go ahead and be pulling a night card after we resolve everything to do with this uh, attack or battle we just had. So, hope you guys are enjoying the playthrough so far. I will, again, check uh, the ruling on this particular battle to ensure I've played it correctly, and we'll move into the next uh, video talking about our rewards for one gold and potentially going, maybe, if we wanted to go get an item, or if we want to hold on to him to uh, satisfy one of the keywords which I think is what we're going to be doing uh, so until next time guys I really appreciate the support hope you guys are enjoying the playthrough so far and uh, there's more to come that is for sure until next time keep on rolling solo